Hi and welcome back. In the previous video we set up the initial project and showed where to find the base peripheral addresses for the Pi 3 and 4. Now let's start on with the rest of the headers. I'm going to start with the common.h file. This is just a header file that I like to include which has all the standard type defs that I'm going to use throughout the project. I'll create one for each of the base types, uh, uint8, uint16, and uint32. I like to have these just shorter form to use throughout the project. It's a little easier to type. I'm also going to create a type def for a volatile u32 to use for registers. And if you don't know what the volatile keyword is for, it's primarily to tell the compiler to leave your code alone. I know what I'm doing. I'm writing a reading to this for a reason. Now, so let's go on to the mini UART file. I'm just going to define some of these init methods, read and write addresses that were um, read and write functions that we're going to use throughout the program. So we initialize, we receive a character, we send a character, and then we can send a full string. These are just going to be the initial definitions, which we'll fill out later. and a memory management header file. Again, Pragma wants the top. So here we're going to define several of the variables that, that deal with memory management. And actually, if you look at the Linux source code, you'll find these in their core memory management. This code is actually taken straight from the Linux source code. So initially, we're defining the size of pages and page tables but, and all of this is done up front so we can initially um, set off where our low memory is going to be which is what we're eventually going to set our stack pointer to and if you follow Sergey's tutorial I believe he goes a little more in depth on these as well And uh, this section here, we're gonna we we need to include this in our in our uh, assembly files as well. But the assembler will break if we add function definitions in it in a C style. So we can include this section here so that we can include these uh, defines in both our assembler and our C files. Now let's move on to the utils. These are some simple utility functions. And a couple of them I don't know that we're actually going to use, but I'll just create them here. So we have the delay, which we're going to need to delay the number of ticks. And then I put 32, which we will put a 32-bit uh, value at an address. And we'll need a get32 as well, which is going to return an unsigned int from an address and actually you know what let's go back and make a u64 because we because we're going to be using 64-bit OS here so we'll create a typed it for unt 64t and we'll just use that one in place of those unsigned longs so we want to be sure that we're using the right size for addresses here these out. And let's add a description for them. So we have delay and ticks. Put 32 address U32 value. And this returns a U32. Now let's get into some of the assembly code. For these utils, I'm going to create some assembly functions here. These come straight from Sergey's tutorial as well. So for the delay function, we're just going to subtract 1 from the value passed in, which is in the X0 register. 
and then branch back to delay until the value is zero essentially. Create another function here for put 32. So we're going to store register a W1 the address x0 and load register w0 from the address x0. Oh, what am I forgetting here? Oh yes, create the label for it. Now let's move on to the memory management. We'll create a simple mem0 function here. And again, I'm going to assume you have some familiarity with uh, assembly language, so I'm not going to go in depth and detail how all this code works, but essentially we're just s using the zero register in a loop to store a null in this address. Then once we're done, we just return. Now let's go into what the kernel's main C code is going to look like. Right now we're just going to start with a simple hello style kernel. Let's include our headers that we need here. So our main is actually going to be called kernel main, which we'll call from our boot, our boot assembly file. At the top we're going to just initialize uart and we'll send a string a simple better than a hello world raspberry pi bare metal os initializing followed by a slash n and, and let's have a section here so if you're if you build this for the r pi version 3 we'll mention the board name here and the output string as well And likewise, we'll do the same for the 4 here. Okay, then we'll just put a done string here. Put a couple lines and then say we're done. And let's go in a little uh, infinite loop here to just read and send, echo back the uh, input that the user types. Okay, and you know what, let's go to the extensions. I want to add our include path here. So I'm going to go to the C++ extension. Let's see, look for include path. Edit the settings.json. I'm just going to add an entry for just include, so that way it picks up our include directory in the file. So now you can see there's no errors here. That's just a Visual Studio Code thing. So let's dive into the boot code here. First, we're going to include our mm.h. So we have those headers. We're going to specify this section as the .text.boot section. So this will be at the very beginning of the file create our global start function. So first we're going to use the MRS instruction here. We're going to pull the um, CPU ID out into X0 and we're going to end it with FF so that we can verify if this is we're going to branch here if the value is 0 for the comparison. We'll branch to our master section which is going to be the which is going to be where our main kernel code is if not we're going to branch to proc hang which is just going to hang the processor so our master section here let's see we're going to start by getting the bss begin address and the bss end address 
let's get the size of that by subtracting <coughs> and then we're just going to run mem0 on that section so now we're going to set the stack pointer to that low memory variable we created and then branch off to kernel main and then branch to process hang which it generally won't get here because it's an infinite loop and proc proc hang is just going to simply do a uh, wait for event instruction and then loop back to proc hang so now we're off to a good start here let's get on back into the header files here So I'm going to create a couple more headers here, one for auxiliary registers, aux.h, and let's create another one here, let's see we had uh, I believe mini uart, muart, no it's a uh, mini uart.h, let me rename this. We're going to add a gpio.h because that's required for the UART. And actually, you know what we're going to do? This UART code differently than Sergey does. So I don't need this mini UART.h in the headers because I'm going to make use of the AUX and the GPIO for that. So starting with the AUX here. Well, let's take a look at the data sheet. Now, if you see the mini UART section in 2.2, it's a part of the AUX, the auxiliaries. So let's go down to here, and you'll see in here we have the registers that handle the mini UART. <coughs> the first couple auxiliary registers there, and then here, these are all the mini UART related registers. Everything from I.O., error handling, and you see this starts at 21, 5000, then 5004, then there's a big gap right before the MUART, and then all these go right one after the other. So they're, they're each, you know, eight, they're, they're each 32-bit uh, registers. So when we can go down here, we see you enable mini UART with that very first register and there's you set bit 0 as defined here to enable the mini UART what you see this was the register right here that we call so what we'll do is actually create a structure for those so let's go back to the AUX.h at our pragma once include our common header and let's include the base too because we're going to need the base address so we're going to create a structure here AUX regs it's going to be our main structure that holds all those registers so if you remember first we had an IRQ status oh, actually reg 32 IRQ status then we had the enables and then if you remember there was a big gap here 5004 to 5040 so we need to put something in place of there we'll just call that a reserved section so we'll say reserved and that's 32 bits times 4 14 so now we go on with the uh, mini UART registers. There was first the IO register, then the IR register, followed by IIR, the LCR, and we had the uh, MCR. The LSR the MSR 
Now we have the scratch, the control register, and the status register, and our baud rate. So those are all the specific mini UART ones that map directly to these registers, which come one after another in the memory map. Scratch, control register, status register, baud rate. And then all the rest of these are related to the spy controller, which we're not going to use right now. So now to access this, we see that the offset here is 7E215000. Remember 7E, we need to translate that to 3F which is our P base, our peripheral base. So 215,000 is really the number that we need to use to access this. So what I'm going to actually do here is create a define. And I'm going to essentially create a pointer to that location in memory, which gets cast as a pointer to the struct. So we use P base plus that 215,000. So whenever we use this reg AUX, we'll actually be able to access these fields from it. So I think that's actually a good stopping point here. Um, in the next video, we'll go over the GPIO section. So uh, we'll, we have two register sets, one for the AUX and one for the GPIO, and that's how we're going to essentially control those pins for the mini UART to communicate to the Raspberry Pi with via our terminal. And as always, if you like this video, like and subscribe, comment, and thanks again for watching.